everyone, I read an article the other day about Emma Watson because I'm nearly 24 and all I think about every day is still Harry Potter and I get Harry Potter Google alerts sent to my phone just in the event that JK Rowling has said on some tiny website or some tiny corner of the internet that she's writing Hogwarts a history. Anyway, so this article was kind of on the gossipy side and since the nature of my job has changed and also the nature of YouTube fame and celebrity has changed and it's becoming this weird thing, I found myself really grossed out by anything even slightly gossipy and celeb news and celeb updates because it just feels really invasive and intrusive and it just makes me feel a bit ill. I can't like passively consume it anymore because I've started to see all these celebrities as people and it's just horrifying. If I could just go back to see them as objects for my consumption and my enjoyment, that would be great. Another part of this is getting to an age where so many of my friends from my English degree have bylines absolutely everywhere and this whole range of publications as they build their career. And the stories I've heard from behind the scenes of these gossip rags make me want to like build a hand out of plugs and punch someone in the face with it. Everyone knows that plugs are the most painful thing. Or actually what I would do is I would build a floor of plugs and then just make them walk all over it. I'm a dark soul. Anyway, I'm getting so far off the point now that I'm basically a candidate for the US presidential nomination. I live in the USA now, I'm allowed to make those jokes. So this article, so Emma Watson broke up with someone who I'm supposed to know the name of or care about with don't because it's not me, and she went on a silent retreat. And that led me to think about my relationship with silence and also recently with turning inwards. I'm an extrovert and I know that the internet sometimes treats extroverts as mythical creatures whose entire purpose in life is not understanding introverts. But I'm an extrovert, I get my energy from spending time with other people it's how I recharge, it's when I laugh hardest, and it's just when happiness feels most real before it slips through my fingers and falls away. And spending time with other people is still my energy source even on days when I feel isolated. And it's tempting to throw up my hands and say, hey, I'm alone in this world, I'm a brain in a vat. Everyone I'm matched with has a gun in their profile picture and it's really weird online dating here. But silence. I'm not very good at silence, but hearing about Emma Watson's silent retreat made me think that I've spent the last few years kind of essentially silent at various points, if not in silence myself silent. When I was working remotely I wasn't talking to anyone for swathes of the day, at least not with my own voice, maybe with my typing hands. When you live by yourself you're silent, except when you sing aloud to yourself and talk to yourself and tell yourself about your day. And then what I've also found in the last few years is that when my brain is really tired and really stressed and it's chemically imbalanced as a default, I'm also kind of silent then too. More than ever before I found myself hanging out with new friends, old friends, close friends, people I've just met, and not really knowing what to say. And I'm half Mexican so that's a big deal. It's like my voice has been stolen by a sea witch or something. When I'm in those modes it's about waiting for a topic to come up that I feel comfortable talking about so it's often a really dire complex sort of issue about pain and suffering around the world and it's very critical and it also makes me feel negative and quite angry in a lot of ways. I may just be misremembering here but I don't think comfort has ever come into it for me before. I used to just say whatever the fuck I wanted to say. On a day to day basis I spend so much of my time loving things and being excited about things and being enthusiastic about things so it does make me sad that I've sort of lost the ability to communicate that in some way. It's like I can't really jumpstart anymore, but if you get me onto the topic of landmines or racism in the film industry, then here I am to converse. And part of me thinks that so much has happened to me in the last four years that my brain has kind of forced me on a silent retreat. But I'm ready to get out of that. I'm not enjoying it anymore. I am a lonely Brit living in Indianapolis, seeking friends, and I just can't be like that anymore. And I also don't have a lot of common denominators I used to say anymore, so I can't really be like, oh hey, that David Cameron, what a wanker born into privilege, eh? Ah. Oh. David Cameron. Can you leave? So how about the non-silence around me? Well, I listen to music while I write and now while I work because I don't really like the sound of air conditioning. It just gets into my head and it goes bzzz. And I also can't sleep without listening to audiobooks because Indianapolis is so silent. I had the same problem when I was in Exeter and it was so quiet. I couldn't hear anything. I need some sirens and some traffic and just some general debauchery going on outside. I just can't sleep in this quiet environment without having an audiobook or something to listen to. But I do talk to myself a lot, I watch YouTube videos a lot, the West Wing is on the background like 70% of the time. And yeah, I mean, how can I be expected to pay my bills without the soothing sounds of 1989 on vinyl? I think it was my friend Ariana who told me a few years ago that there's actually some sort of scientific biological reason for fear of silence, like actual pure silence because it means danger uh, to animals or something. I don't know, it just means that something's going wrong, maybe it's like a natural event going wrong. Or there's a velociraptor that's eaten all your friends and your family and you're going to die next, you know, that sort of thing. But the idea of a silent retreat or the analogy of a silent retreat and my brain forcing itself to go on one really appeals to me because there's so much noise going on in my head, my inbox is reaching capacity and Google is asking me to upgrade. 
But yeah, I do kind of feel like I've been on a silent retreat of sorts the past six months to a year or so, and it's like riding this big wave of going in and checking in with your friends and your day-to-day -day life, and then being pulled back out again to something different, and then going in and out and in and out until you're pulled away by the current sometimes and things get a bit serious and darker and less pleasant. But if it is an emergency coping mechanism or something, how do you know when your brain has done enough emergency patchwork? How do you know if you're isolating yourself because it's easier or because you've had an experience that is so vastly different from your friends' experiences that you don't really know how language functions anymore? None of the questions in this video are rhetorical. I'd love to know your thoughts, your answers, your suggestions, etc. And I'd also love to know whether you've gone through a quiet patch, whether you're normally shy or sociable. Regardless of that, something that just felt different in a way and whether it was ultimately helpful or harmful, at least where you're standing right now. Anyway, I'm ready to be back in action and back in conversation, so I'll see you in comments. Thanks for listening as always. Goodbye. Hello, I wanted to talk to you about Asking For It, which is by Louise O'Neill, who also wrote Only Ever Yours, the winner of the YA Book Prize.